I've got it on pause, and, and what you're looking at is a knitting needle. And I, I happen to have in my uh, crew preference a couple of knitting needles. And uh, not that we have a lot of time to do knitting up here, but there's some other neat things you could do with them. And so uh, watch, watch this. So here I have a piece of paper, and I rub the knitting needle with a piece of paper. And this knit needle is a polyethylene knit needle. It's eight millimeters in diameter. And now I'm going to take a syringe with a little Teflon uh, cannula. I'm going to squirt drops of water out. And look what happens when those drops of water get close to that charged knit needle. So this is like a little satellite going around a cylindrical shaped planet. Except the physics here is a little bit different. It's not about gravitation. It's about charge forces. And of course, charges can exert a potential field, as we call it. So it can exert a force at a distance with no tangible connection. And so you have a charge drop that was ejected from the Teflon tip syringe. And then you have the, the charged uh, knit needle. And uh, they're going to be attracted if they're opposite charges, but because the drop has some velocity to it, it's orbiting around the knitting needle. Now this knit needle happens to be a little different than uh, when we started out. This knit needle is made out of Teflon, and uh, Teflon has some really neat static charging properties when you rub it, and I figured it'd be good to have a Teflon knit needle when you're on station. Now look at this droplet. It's orbiting around, and since we have cylindrical geometry here, it can precess down the cylinder, but then it gets to the end, and it reverses its direction and winds back along the cylinder. So it seems to be trapped. And here we have some little tiny droplets. They kind of remind me of flies on a picnic out in uh, Houston. And these droplets, the bigger ones that you're seeing there, are about uh, six to seven millimeters. That Teflon rod is about six and a half millimeters in diameter. And, and here you see a bunch of little tiny droplets, and, and they're making spirals, and they go down the cylinder for a while, and then they'll reverse their direction and spiral back. Now, if you look closely up in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see the injection nozzle from the syringe, but you also see that I have a second knit needle, actually a third knit needle, and that knit needle is made out of nylon, and so you can rub the nylon, you can rub the Teflon, and there's some interesting charge properties that happen uh, between Teflon and nylon, and, and it, I found that it's useful to have these when you want to put a charge on a droplet so it will orbit your uh, knit needle. There you can see the, the tip of the nylon knit needle that I charged up with the same piece of, of paper type of rubbing. Now, this might also have some physics analogies to what happens with charged particles when they come down Earth's magnetic field. Again, the physics here is a little different, but the fact that you have charged solar particles spiraling down Earth's magnetic field, sometimes hitting different layers in the atmosphere, reflecting off and, and, and going back, uh, spiraling back along the, the magnetic field line. And again, this is charge but the behavior has uh, analogous uh, implications to what uh, might be happening in our Earth's magnetic field uh, with charged particles. And this, of course, uh, is one of the key uh, players to giving us our uh, aurora. And of course, uh, once you set up a knit needle like this, you start to play with the water droplets. Uh, you you just you just can't have too much video like this. It, it is it's so much fun to watch these little droplets and and notice as they get closer and closer to the the knit needle. 
their orbits go faster and faster. And the further away from the knit needle, the slower the orbit. The closer to the knit needle, the faster the orbit. And that's the same thing with the orbital mechanics when you have a satellite around a planet. And again, the physics is different. Uh, planets, uh, satellites orbiting planets is uh, gravitational potentials and gravitational forces. And this is static electric uh, potentials and static electric forces. But uh, the analogous behavior makes a great uh, engineering or educational demonstration for students.